Welcome to the All Plan Quick Start Lesson 9. In this lesson, we will look at how to generate drawing deliverables. Before setting up the layout drawings, we need to generate the derived drawing files. From a previous lesson, we saw how to create views and sections. We can now place these views and sections on their own derived drawing file. This process makes creating the end deliverables much easier. Here we have generated a foundation plan view and several sections from the main model. Open the building structure. The views and sections were generated from three main drawing files, 101, 102, and 103. We can now create the derived files from these views and sections. Activate the derived objects by turning on this checkbox. Setting up these files is similar to setting up the building structure files, and this is one way we recommend to organize the information. Double click on file 500 to open the foundation plan. Here you can see this is simply a plan view of the foundation. On this view, you can now add dimensions, labels, and other information to complete the drawing. Let's go back into the building structure to see how to create derived section files. Create the drawing files as we saw for the main building structure. Then right click on a drawing file and select Generate Section. Choose all the drawing files needed to view all the information in the section. Here we will generate a section file for section 22 from the foundation plan. We need to activate the drawing files 101, 102, and 103. In the Clipping Path drop-down menu, make sure to select the section that you want to add to this file. Here you can also set different layers as active or inactive. For example, if you only want to show certain reinforcement in this view or you don't want to show the slabs, you can turn specific layers off so that information will not be visible. Another important setting here is the Formats setting. Here you can define how the section will look. You can eliminate or keep adjacent edges. Use the preview picture to see how these options affect the drawing. You can also choose if and how visible and hidden edges will be displayed. Click OK to confirm and close. Now open this file by double clicking on it to see the derived section. At the bottom of the screen, change the scale for this drawing file to 3 quarter inch scale. In this file, we can now add information that we want displayed in our final documents, such as adding dimensions, markers, text, and anything else to complete the section. Note that you can also bring in common and typical sections from other programs such as PDFs or DWGs. Once you've built up your plans and sections, you can add them to a layout to create your design drawings. In the ribbon, click on the Layout Editor. This is the space where you generate the deliverables. Start by setting up the page size and the Setup Page command. Select from the Format option or type in your own size. Under the Properties, you can select a title block. Note, you can also do this later through the separate label command. There are several out-of-the-box options to choose from. It is also very easy to create your own custom title block to match your company standards. For now, we will choose one of the default options, number 2. Next, set a border for your sheet. Adding a border also makes it easier to add custom labels later. Working with the deliverables is similar to working with the modeling files. Double left click to open the layouts dialog box called open on a project specific basis layouts. There are several options to help manage your document in here. Here you can move between different layouts by double clicking on one. You can also give a file a name to make it easier to manage. The default title blocks are associative. They have assigned attributes that will bring in project data. You can create your own title blocks to work in the same way. To assign this information, open the New Project Open Project dialog box. Right click on your project and go to Properties. Click on Assign Attributes. Here you can find the attributes used in the title block and input the necessary information. Notice that once we've done this, the title block is updated with the information that we input in the Assign Attributes dialog box. Another important setup and management tool is the Layout Attributes. Select this command from the ribbon. 
Here, all your files will be listed with properties and information. In the index table, you can add revision history. This information will automatically populate into the title block. Now we're ready to add drawing files to our layout. In the ribbon, click on the Layout Element command. Click on the building icon to select the file or files you want to add to the layout. You can select multiple files at once to bring them in together, or one at a time. First, go to the Derived Object Files and select the Plan View Drawing 500 Foundation Plan. Click OK. In the dialog box, you can indicate information about the file, such as the input reference point and scale. In this quick start guide, we will not go into detail on the layer, print set, or the drawing type. However, these are very powerful tools that will make managing your files easier. They can control layers and elements to make turning information on or off very quick and also standardize projects within your company. If you'd like more information on these, please contact our support department. Now click in the layout to place the drawing. The next drawing on the list will automatically come up, so you can keep placing drawings or press escape to quit. For this example, we'll also add the foundation sections to this sheet. Open the layout element command again. This time select the foundation section 600 drawing file. Notice the scale has changed to correspond to the scale that was used to draw this section. Click on the sheet to place the section. Now we can continue placing the sections. Click again on the sheet to place the remaining two foundation sections. At this point, it's easy to make changes to the layout. You can use the typical CAD commands to move or copy the drawings. We can also use any of these tools to draw on this sheet or add text. We do recommend for you to do most of your work in the model, but there may be times when you prefer to add information directly on the layout sheet. That brings us to the end of Lesson 9 of the Quick Start Guide.